Hey guys, welcome to my channel Tokyo Foodie Sarah. In this video today, I'm gonna show you nine things you can do around Tokyo Station. I'm planning to make this into a new series where I'm gonna show you nine things you can do around one particular area. And the theme of this is gonna be if I am to take my friend around this area, th these are the nine things that I would make them do. And it's gonna be food focused, of course. Let's get into it. Tokyo Station is one of the busiest transportation hubs in the city, connecting travelers to various destinations within Tokyo and beyond. In this video, we'll be exploring the top 9 things to do near Tokyo Station. Number 1. Take a stroll at the Imperial Palace Gardens. Our first stop is the Imperial Palace Gardens. Just a short walk from Tokyo Station, the Palace Gardens are a peaceful oasis in the middle of the busy streets of Tokyo. Before showing you the Imperial Palace Gardens, I want to show you this really fancy Starbucks just across the road. Starbucks Coffee. Kokyo Gaien Wadakura Fountain Park. I am at a very fancy Starbucks just beside the Imperial Palace and hopefully I can get a seat. Let's see. If you're staying around Tokyo Station, I highly recommend you stay at the Palace Hotel. You can have a view of the Imperial Palace and it's freaking expensive. I can't afford it. <laughs> I noticed that a part of this building is just a resting area for the public. You can take a seat here without getting Starbucks. There's a water dispenser for you to fill up your water bottle. As expected, there were no seats available because Starbucks in Japan are always super full. So I decided not to get anything here and just head towards the gardens. This is the view from the Imperial Palace over the Marunouchi area, which is like a really corporate area, I'd say. And guess what? I used to work in one of those buildings. The Imperial Palace, known as Kokyo in Japanese, is the primary residence of the Emperor of Japan. It showcases traditional Japanese architectural elements and design. The Nijubashi, meaning double bridge, is one of the most iconic features of the Imperial Palace. The bridge serves as the main entrance to the palace and its image is often associated with the Imperial Palace. The Imperial Palace is definitely nice to just have a stroll around on a really clear day like this. It's like 25 degrees now and it's like just amazing. It's a bit hot but it's not too hot yet. This is a statue of Kusunoki Masashige. He was a warrior in the Japanese history. There's a matcha ice cream place which I'm really really tempted to get. But I will be showing a matcha dessert later so I'll say no. They have ice cream with gold leaf on it. Oh my god, how fancy and it's a thousand yen, wow. Oh, by the way, this road that leads to the Imperial Palace from the station is a very popular place for wedding photos. Number 2. Enjoy walking around and shopping in the Marunouchi area. If you're looking to do some high-end shopping, head to Nakadori in the Marunouchi area. This street has fancy shops and fancy restaurants. It's also a place for Instagrammable photos. There are some shopping malls. Marunouchi Building, Shin Marunouchi Building, and Kite to name a few, where you can find more of the Japanese brands. A lot of businesswomen in Japan, like myself, shop in these types of buildings. Number 3. Have a matcha tiramisu at Marunouchi Cafe Kai. Inside Kite, which is one of the buildings I mentioned earlier, there's a cafe called Marunouchi Cafe Kai. It is run by a collaboration of Tully's Coffee, which is a large coffee chain in Japan, and Itoen, which is a large beverage company that has a brand of famous green tea. I first went there when I came back to Japan during the summer holiday from a university in the UK. I could not forget this matcha tiramisu I had 7 years ago that I even mentioned it in my Q&A video that I filmed more than 2 years ago. They had things like pasta and other desserts, but I ordered matcha tiramisu, of course. OMG, you guys, I finally got my matcha tiramisu. So I had this about, I don't know, five, six years ago uh, when I was still a high school student or no, a uni student. And I really, really liked it. So I really wanted to come back. And here I am after a few years. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, let's try it. So there's a layer of red bean paste at the bottom and also some sort of like matcha, I don't know, brownie sort of thing. Um, and then there's the mascarpone bit and then there's like a sea of matcha powder. If I sneeze on this, I feel like the matcha powder will go all over the camera. Anyway, it is so dense and it's so, so good. Oh my god, this is something I've been waiting to have for a few years. Mm. I also ordered some iced coffee to go with the matcha tiramisu. By the way, if you want to check out the recipe for a healthier version of tiramisu, which is tofu tiramisu, check out my video here. Yes, shameless self-promotion. Number four, have a bowl of ramen at Ramen Street. The Tokyo Ramen Street is filled with eight different ramen restaurants. Each restaurant has its own unique selling points, such as specializing in soy sauce, miso, or tonkotsu ramen. You can pick on your restaurant depending on your favorite flavor of ramen. Or like I did, pick the one with the shortest queue. I'm kidding, all places had long queues. The restaurant I picked is called Gyoku. Whether or not you purchase the ticket in the beginning of the line or end of the line depends on the ramen restaurant. At Gyoku, you have to get your tickets before you queue. But in the restaurant opposite to Gyoku, you have to get your tickets just before you get seated. Though, I'm not sure if you would be able to get that message through Google Translate. It's the last time to buy a meal ticket. Mm. I went for the special rich thick soba noodles, which is their signature dish. They call it soba noodles, but really the noodles are just thick ramen noodles. Garlic? What's that? Wasabi sauce? No. <laughs> Oh, chili. And pepper. Chili. I think vinegar. Okay, you guys, the special ramen has arrived. Oh my god, look. Oh, it smells amazing. Oh. As the name suggests, it's so dense. Wow. And you can definitely taste the fish, the fish broth. Mmm. Oh. And then the noodles. Oh my god, look. You, you can definitely see that the soup is really merging with the noodles. Mm. The noodles are definitely not too thick, but it's so. Like it's, it's actually quite chewy and it's really nice. Oh my god. And the broth, the broth is really, really nice. Mm. And the precious meat. At first sight, the queue may look really, really long, but because people enjoy ramen within like 10 20 minutes, the turnover is actually quite high, so you don't have to wait for that much time. I think I, I have to queue for maybe 15 20 minutes, and that's about it, so it's definitely worth the wait. It's so good. No! <laughs> Oh my god, I'm the worst at spilling things. Oh no! Okay, you guys be careful, now you know. And I'm gonna be filming for the rest of the day with this on my shirt, whatever. This is the moment, guys. Oh! 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 I'm now gonna show you ajihen, which means to change up the flavor. So I'm gonna try using um, black pepper. Oh yeah. So like halfway through, you can change up the flavor, and you won't get bored of it. And maybe some oh pepper. How do I? What? Okay, I think this opens, and then you can just like yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> no. You can tell I never really eat ramen. 
It smells very peppery. Yay. The pepper gives it so much flavor and it's so good. Okay, that was super good, but I really, really want. Oh my god. And also, the stain hasn't disappeared yet, so um, I'm gonna show you how you can get rid of this stain very efficiently. Guys, this is a life changer, okay? If you spill anything on your clothes, get this. By the way, this is my shirt before, so I have a big stain here and I have a few stains down here and I'm gonna clean it all up at the bathroom, okay? So I used the stain removal thing and then I kind of rinsed it with water and it is gone, you guys. Oh my god, it's a lifesaver if you're like me. Number five, get some character merch at Character Street. This underground area within Tokyo Station is like heaven if you like character merch. There are a lot of shops here. They have shops for classic characters such as Dragon Ball, Ultraman, and Crayon Shinchan, as well as those that are relative new such as Jujutsu Kaisen and My Hero Academia. There are also some international characters such as Harry Potter, Disney, and Mifi, or Nainchie, as they call it in the Netherlands. Yeah, I'm picking up some Dutch from my business trips, you know. <laughs> I wish. You can find a very Japanese store with sumo wrestlers and kabuki. These sumo cookies look really interesting. You can also get strawberry Kit Kat and sake Kit Kat here. No! It's a bread! One thing to note, there's a Pokemon store, but it had a long queue to get in. My personal favorite recently is the Mofu Sand characters. I mean, look at that cute chubby cat. Some of them have tempura hats on them or are wearing shark onesies. They even have dorayaki with Mofu Sand design. I bought some souvenirs for my mom, aka Tokyo Foodie Mama, because she's also a massive fan of Mofu Sand. Number 6. Have some freshly made potato chips at Tokyo Okashi Land. Okashi in Japanese means snack, and Tokyo Okashi Land is an area that sells snacks. I went straight to the Kalbi store. Kalbi is a very famous snack company in Japan, and they are famous for their crisps. You can buy various souvenirs here, or appreciate the artwork, but I was here for the freshly made crisps. You can see them being made right in front of you. You need to first queue to get your ticket, which took me 20 minutes because I was there on Golden Week, one of the busiest seasons in Japan. And then how it works is that you need to wait until your snack is made, which turned out to be 90 minutes because it was super busy. So let's move on to number 7 on this list and then come back to the crisp later. So number 7, get some Tokyo souvenirs. Tokyo Station is filled with souvenir shops. You can find so many different types of Tokyo souvenirs here. This shop called Gift Kiosk sells different types of famous souvenirs in one shop. So you can get different brands and pay all at once. I find these stores more convenient than paying at different stores. I made a separate video showing 10 different souvenirs you can get here and rated each one of them. If you are curious about which souvenir to get, make sure you watch that video. There are a lot more souvenir stores other than gift kiosks. For example, you can find a stall just for Tokyo Banana. You can find a wider variety here, such as the Disney or Moomin Collab Tokyo Banana. Okay, let's go back to the Kalbi store for the crisps I ordered. Hi, you guys, it is finally here. I had to queue for 20 minutes to get the ticket and then um, it was another an hour and a half for it to, you know, actually get fried for me. So let's try this. This one's the famous Jagariko potato, which has just been fried. And this one's the potato chip, which is the butter soy sauce, I think it was. Yeah, it's like the original flavor. Yes. So let's try the Jagariko first. Oh. oh, it's soft. Normally, if you get jagariko at the store, they're like really, really crispy, like really crunchy. And this one's like soft. Oh, interesting. More like, you know, these like fries that you would get at McDonald's. <laughs> I'll be very honest with you. I think I prefer the store-bought 
javarico, which is very crispy. But this one's more like potatoey. You can definitely taste and feel the potato inside. Like, yeah. And I'm gonna try the astro crisps. <gasps> oh, oh man. This one's so good. It's so buttery and it's filled with flavor. And it's like crispy. Oh my god. Mm. So you guys, when you visit the Kalbi um, store, I would recommend you to get the different flavors because they have different flavors of these. So get the crisp um, rather than the javariko. Unless you want like soft potato kind of fries kind of feeling. Yeah, but I highly recommend this one. I wanted to get the pizza pizza flavored one but yeah maybe that's for next time when there's less people queuing up number eight go shopping at yaechika yaechika short for yaesu chikagai is a large shopping mall in the underground of the yaesu area it's the area on the east side of tokyo station at this place you can find a lot of shops like shoe shops uh, clothes shops glasses shop a uh, hundred yen store drug store uh, restaurants yeah, literally anything. They even have a mini Don Quixote here. You can get all these like snacks. That's amazing, isn't it? There's also the souvenir Don Quixote. Oh my god! <gasps> they have all these Kit Kats! What the heck? So they have the sake Kit Kat, the matcha Kit Kat, um, apple Kit Kat, I don't know, hojicha Kit Kat? Oh, what are those? Oh! Milk tea kicker, chocolate orange, uh, not my thing, dark chocolate, wow. And they have all the booze, ooh, shiny, fancy. Like that clothes store, it's called the Natural Beauty Basic. Yeah, it's good for like uh, business women. L'Occitane en Provence, yes. I probably pronounced that wrong, whatever. Oh, and. Yeah, the shop called Green Arrows. Green, no, <laughs> United Arrows. Um, it's also one of my favorite shops. And then, yeah, there's more clothes shops, um, shoe shop, underwear shop. That shoe shop is called Madras and it's quite famous. Um, it's run by the parents of a very famous Japanese celebrity. Yeah, it's from Nagoya. ABC Mart is also another popular shoe brand. Not brand, but they have like different brands within ABC Mart. Um, oh, three coins. They have everything for 300 yen. Uh, I have a video on it. Make sure to check that out. Drugstore, Coco Para Sign, it's called. Oh, Mizuno Sportswear. Oh, and then I think from here we get into the restaurant section. Yes. I booked a fried chicken place within um, somewhere over there today, so I will show you that in the next one. Shanghai Liao Li. Ooh, soba. Ooh, drinking place. The third burger. Okay. Pronto. One of my favorite cafes. Oh, Okinawa food. That is the whole picture of Yaesu Chikagai, uh, Yaechika. It's actually quite big, isn't it? And these green ones are, I think, like fashion, yeah, and like uh, different, like small things. And then orange are the restaurants. And for dinner, I am gonna show you this one that specializes in fried chicken. Yes. Oh, that's the drugstore. I got the stain removal thing. It's very useful. You can also see that there's a lot less people compared to the Marunouchi area, I think. Oh, Italian. Oh, what's that? Antenna America. Classic shareables. Yes. Oh my god. And it's very, very popular. Ooh. <laughs> More clothes shops. And then there's a really fancy cafe I recommend. Look at this, it's Cafe Excelsior, which is like a chain cafe. And it's usually not this fancy in other places, but here it's like super fancy with like black and green. Oh, there's Goncha, bubble tea, very popular here. There's a massive queue for Goncha. Not surprising at all. Number nine, have dinner at an izakaya. For dinner, I picked this izakaya, Japanese drinking bar, called Konotori. Oh, 
I got myself a glass of highball as usual with a mix with soda. Um, oh, it's so refreshing after such a long day. Oh my god, so here is their signature karaage fried chicken. Oh my god with some mayonnaise. Oh my god, it's so big! I got the biggest piece because you guys know I'm a greedy bitch. Oh. Mm. It's like so crispy and it's actually really rich in flavor and also it's quite salty I'd say compared to like the normal, like the other karage you would have in other places. So I think it makes you drink the alcohol more. That is green pepper with some salted seaweed. I think the pepper is raw. I don't think I've ever had um, raw, pe raw, raw, raw pepper before. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's really refreshing. I actually quite like it. I ordered five types of yakitori and yakitori normally comes in skewers but this just comes in a bunch of meat. That's interesting. And the guy didn't explain what these are. Normally they do. Um, I'm guessing that's like chicken breast, thigh, um, some sort of organ, I don't know, liver maybe. Uh, uh, skin maybe. And then yeah, we got some tomatoes. Cold tomatoes. Here we have some grilled leek with some miso and shiitake mushrooms yes oh my god you guys i just had the leaf right and it's like grilled in the perfect way and also the miso adds so much flavor to it this is really good and then we have some egg rolls it was getting a little noisy at the first izakaya, so I decided to come to a second place which was a really nice wine bar called Acorn. There was a wide variety of ham and prosciutto as well as cheese. There were options for Japanese cheese. The prices of glass wine were not too bad for Tokyo Station. The cheapest was 440 yen for a glass and the most expensive was 880. I got Iberico ham from Spain and Camembert from Hokkaido, Japan. I got my second glass. <laughs> ah, it's Cabernet Sauvignon. The previous one was an Australia Shiraz. I've added some goat cheese, Saint Mar Blanc, yes, with some acacia honey, yes, and some more vino. Yeah. Alright guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more future videos about Japanese food and culture. Bye!